so I'm not going to do all the problems, but I'll give you uh, an idea of some of the problems. Uh, use some of the problems so you can get an idea. Okay. So I think I did one, two, I don't know if I did three in class. We can do that right now. So here's what you went over in class today. So you had 343 divided by 0.35. And we're going to write that as a fraction first. Will you always do this? No. But at least now you get to know why we moved the decimal. So we're going to multiply that by a power of 10 to make our divisor, or our denominator in this case, into a whole number. In order for this to be a whole number, this decimal should be on that side. So how do I get to move this decimal all the way to this side to become 35? In order to do that, we discussed that every time I move one decimal place, it means I multiply by 10. So if I move another one, it moves, multiplies by 100. And if I move another one, it multiplies by 1,000. So I want to multiply this bottom, my divisor, by 1,000. And if I multiply the bottom by 1,000, I multiply the top by a thousand. So if I multiply by a thousand, it allows me to move one, two, three spots. My decimal ends up here, so my number is now 35. And if you want to put a little decimal there at the end, it's okay just for now. 343, I'm going to do it over here. We're going to move that decimal three spaces over to the right. It's going to go one, two, three. We're going to put a zero over here, right, in the empty space. And our decimal is going to be at the end, which is what we want. Well, not for the dividend, but definitely for the divisor. So our number on top becomes 3430. Oops. 3430. So now <clears throat> we can divide because our number here, this is the number I care about, is a whole number. Set up your division as you always have. I'm going to divide this by 35. And 35 does not go into 3, 35 does not go into 34, but 35 goes into 343. I'm going to say 9 times. I took a guess, but I think I'm right. Let's multiply that by 9. 9 times 5 is 45, goes 4. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 4, 31. 315. Okay, so 13 minus 5 is 8. This borrowed, right? So 3 minus 1 is 2. And I'm going to bring the 0 down. 35 goes into 280, I don't know, maybe 7 times. Uh, so let me multiply 35 times 7. No, it's not going to be times 8. No, times 6. <coughs> 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry the 3. 6 times 5 is 18. No, that's, that's not going to work. That's too little. Um, let's try 8. 35, I'm sorry, times 8. What am I doing? 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4, 28. Yeah, so it's 8 times the 8 on top of that 0. 8 times 35 is 280. And I get a remainder of 0. So 3,430 divided by 35 is 98. Or 3.43 divided by 0 0.035 is also equal to 80. Okay? It's much easier when you do it with whole numbers. Um, Let's go and do number six, okay? So for number six, again, I want to write that as a fraction. I get 17.343 divided by 36.9. Again, I'm gonna multiply this by something so that my divisor, my denominator here becomes a whole number. So in order for it to be a whole number, this decimal has to move one space over, and one space over means multiply by 10. That's going to give me 369. If I multiply the bottom by 10, I multiply the top by 10, right? And I move this decimal over one over. Um, so it's going to be 173 decimal 43. Doesn't matter that the top is a decimal, it's the bottom one that you want to make into a whole number. Now we divide 173.43. And we're going to divide that by 369. I'm going to move that decimal that's here into my quotient. Okay, so it's part of my answer. 369 does not go into 1, does not go into 17, does not go into 173. So I'm going to put a 0 there. But it definitely goes into 1734. I'm going to say that 4 times. Let's try 4 times. 
36 goes 3, 27 goes 2, 1, 4, 4, 7, 6, and it's definitely 4 times. I think 5 is going to be too much. And it's 1, 4, 7, 6. Let's subtract. We need some borrowing here. So 7 becomes a 6. This becomes 13, which becomes a 12, and this becomes 14. 14 minus 6 is 8. 12 minus 7 is 5. And 6 minus 4 is 2, 5, 8. And I'm going to bring a 3 down. So now we got to figure out how many times 369 goes into 2,583. I'm going to say 7, because it's the only number that multiplied by 7, by 9, that's going to end up in a 3. So let's see if I'm right. 7 times 9, it is 63, so it ends up at 3, so that matches. Carry the 6. 7 times 6 is 42, plus 2 is 8. Carry the 4. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 25. And you can look at that. So it is indeed a 7. So we get 2,583 over 0. So it makes sense because 369, it can't all of it go inside 173, but some part of it can go in. How much? About 0 0.47 uh, or 47 percent of it can go in inside 173. Okay? Um, Alright, let's do some more problems. Oops. Norman purchased three and a half pounds of his favorite mix of dry fruits. Um, total cost was $16.87. How much did it cost per pound? Well, again, so it's going to be 16.87 divided by 3.5. That's our numerical expression. I'm going to change that to a fraction, 6.87 divided by 3.5. Now multiply by something so that my divisor here, my number at the bottom becomes a 35, a whole number. So I'm going to put 35 over here. What would I multiply 3.5 to get it to 35? Well, obviously, we're going to multiply it by 10 because the decimal moves 1 over and 1 over means multiply by 10. So on the top is times 10 as well. And again, we're going to move that decimal 1 over. And my new number is going to become 168.7, 168.7. So let's divide 168.7 divided by 35. Let's bring that decimal that's here up. 35 goes into 168, uh, I don't know, five times, I think. It looks like five. 25 goes two. No, it's too much. Uh, times four. 20 goes to 12, 140. So let's put a zero, or actually four times, right? On top of the eight. Four times 35 is 140. Subtract. You get two eight. Bring the seven down. Um, 35 goes to 287. Shoot. Seven times. Eight times would be 24, 40. Let's try 8 times. 8 times 5 is 40. Carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24. 28. 280. So definitely 8 times. So if it's 8 times, it becomes 280. When I subtract, I get a 7 left over. What you can do here, you don't leave it as a remainder, but you can add a 0 here and bring that down. Now that gives me 70. I can continue my division by adding a 0 here. Okay, just to see if it works. And in this case, you can tell it's definitely going to work. 35 goes to 70 two times. And my final answer is 70. 4.82. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you leave out here, um, I'm going to my bag is going to I'm going to see that. Alright. So, sorry for the interruption. I am in my night job. We have something to take care of. All right, so next one. Nine. Daryl spent 490, 468 on each pound of trail mix. His total, he spent a total of 14.04. .04. How many pounds of trail mix did he purchase? This one is not that bad because you can tell, right? So this is your expression. He spent this much 
and divided by 4.68, even if you took around a, a, an estimate, it looks like three pounds, definitely not four pounds, because that would have been $16 and change or even more, but definitely three pounds and something. So you already know our answer here, and here's where our estimate can definitely uh, comes in handy. It's gonna be about three something. So let's change this. Let's multiply this by something so that my denominator here, or my divisor becomes a whole number. <laughs> So notice this case, in order for 4.68 to become 468, we need to move that decimal two places over. And two places over means multiply by 100. And I multiply the top by 100. And on the top, I'm going to move it two places over, one, two, and we're going to get, we're going to get 1,404. We can now divide. It's a little bit easier to divide when they're whole numbers. Okay, we haven't... These are equivalent fractions. We haven't changed the value of the fraction. 468 does not go into 1, does not go into 14, does not go into 140, but it goes down into, goes into 1,404 uh, three times. Let's see. 3 times 8 is 24. Carry the 2. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry 2 is 20. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 2, 14. Look at that. That one was pretty simple. So, how many pounds of chill mix did he purchase? He bought the final answer should be he purchased three pounds of trail mix. So the idea here is the same. Change the divisor to a whole number. And everything else after that is just simple dividing like you have always have been dividing. Um, so it's 10. 10 is a little tricky because I don't know how many of you did percentages. So... He has $161, and he wants to save 25% of it. we got to figure out what 25%. 25%. Okay, so think about a circle. If you cut it into four, this is 25%, this is 25%, this is 25%, this is 25%, right? Because adding all of, that, all of them up will give you 100%. So 25% can also be written, well, and again, here's the little trick. Um, you have to know that 25% written as a decimal is 0 0.25. And that's the tricky part with this question. Let's write it as a fraction. So I don't know how many of you knew that. Okay. Um, we got to change. Thank you. We got to change now to 0 0.25. We got to multiply it by something power of 10 to make it equal to 25. So how do we change 0 0.25 to make it 25? We got to multiply again by 100. Move it one, two over, and moving two over. We talked how that means also um, multiplying by 100. And on top, we're going to multiply by 100, and we're going to move that decimal two over one, two. And it's going to turn out to be at one, six, one, two, five. So our final numbers are 116,125 divided by 25. Let's see how that works. It doesn't go into one, does not go into 16, but it does go into 161, one, two, three, four, six times which is 150. If I subtract, I'm going to get 11 uh, as my leftover, and 2 comes down. 25 goes into 112 four times, which is 100. Subtract, I'm going to get 12 left over, bring that 5 down, and 25 goes into 20, 125 five times. So, So there's something wrong here because 645, it's definitely not the amount he has to save. What did I do wrong? Uh, oh, this is 25% of the amount she needs to save. How much money does... Uh, hang on a second. Is... Mammy save... Uh, this is 25% of the amount she needs to save. How much money does she need to save? Well, the, so that's 25, so I'm sorry, I completely misread that. So it's 161 dollars, 25. 25% of is what she needs to save. So if you cut this in four, you notice that this is 161.25. That's how much you save, 25%. This would be another 161.25. This would be another 161.25, and this would be 161.25. So how much does she need to save? It would be the total over here, and that 
let's see if it actually works out to 645. It's 161.25 times 4, right? Uh, 0, 0 goes 1, no, 4 times 10, 8 goes out to so 5, 24, up to 645. Okay, so you could have done multiplication or just the way we've done it. I just misinterpreted the question. So your answer is 645. Okay. Clear annotations. And I don't know if I'm going to have time to do all of it. Okay, so Kareem purchased several packs of gums. Each, each pack of gum costs $100.26. He spent a total of $8.82. How many packs of gums did he buy? Well, so, oops. No, 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 here we go. So, $8.82 divided by 1.26. Let's write it as a fraction, 8.82 divided by 1.26. How do we change that? into a whole number. How does the 126 is going to be, uh, 1.26 turn to 126? And again, the movement seems uh, it's going to be 1, 2, and 2 over means multiply by 100. I'm going to multiply the top by 100 as well. Okay, whatever I do the bottom, I do the top. And that moves 1, 2 over, and that ends up being 882. You can sort of already estimate how many times 126 can fit into 882. We can say about maybe 7, 7 times. Well, let's see if that's so my estimate is about 7 times, or even 8. Um, 126 doesn't go into 8, doesn't go into 88, but it goes into 882. We just got to figure out how many times. So I pick 8. 8 times 6 is 48. Goes 4. 16, 20, too much. 126 times 7, which should have been my better choice. 7 times 6 is 42, carry the 4. 7 to 14 plus 4 is 8, carry the 1. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 1, 882. So I should have said 7 before. How many packs of gum did he buy? 7. Okay. And I'm running out of time. Let's do 12 because that seems to be a little wordy. Okay, he's making candles. He has a lot of beeswax, which is 132.72 ounces. Each candle, it's how many candles can he make? Okay, so this seems to be two questions in one. So let's do 12. Actually, yeah, let's do 12. So that's two different questions in one. I don't know why. I probably typed it in wrong. So let's do that. So Mr. Jared has this much beeswax. And each beeswax, he's uh, each candle he makes requires this much, 8.4 ounces. Now, how many times can this fit in that? Right? We'll determine the number of candles he can make. Well, will he have any left over? Let's find out. Fraction. 8.4 is a fraction. Okay. We're going to multiply this by something to make that 8.4 turn into a whole number which is 84. The movement is 1 over, so that means multiply by 10. And the top is also going to be multiplied by 10, and that's going to keep 1 over. So the new number on top is 1, 3, 2, 7.2, because the decimal shifted one place to the right. There's a new number. Let's divide. 3, 7.2 divided by 84. Doesn't go into 1, doesn't go into 13, goes into 132 at one time. Um, that becomes 12, becomes 12 minus 4 is 8, 12 minus 8 is 4. Bring the 7 down. Ooh, 5 times? Yes, I'm going to say 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20, goes 2, 40, 42. Subtract 7, 6, and then bring 2 down. And something I forgot to do is to push this decimal up, so it's part of my quotient as well. 84 going to 672 8 times. Let's try 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. 8 times 8 is 64 plus 3 is 67. So how many candles can you make? Well, this is our whole number, right? To the left is our whole numbers and to the right is our decimal. He can for surely make 15 candles. Okay. 
And will there be any wax left over? Yes, there'll be some wax left over. Okay, so. But some wax left over, he can almost make at that. He had 0.2 more, he would make, he would be able to make another candle, but he doesn't. Okay. Um, that's it. Can I do one more? Is there more of that one? Simple. Let's do a more complicated one, either 14 or 15. So I'm going to pick one of these two, and that will be my last. Pick this one. So 159.2 over 6.8. Let's change our divisor to a whole number. That's going to be 68. And how is that accomplished? Move The movement is 1 over. The movement of 1 over means multiply by 10. And the top will be multiplied by 10. And we got to move that decimal 1 over as well. So the number on top becomes 159.1.2. One, Set up your division, and here we go. Doesn't go into one, doesn't go into fifteen, but it goes into one fifty nine two times. Sixteen thirteen. Let's subtract nine minus six is three. Five minus three is two. Let's bring the one down. And again, I keep. Uh, well, let me add this decimal. Push it up here. Okay. Sixty eight goes into two thirty one. Not four times because that'd be too much. Three times. Let's try 3. 3 times 8 is uh, 24. Carry 2. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 2, 204. Subtract. 2, 11 minus 4 is 7. 272. 68 goes to 272 4 times. Uh, let's try it. Let me see. 32 goes 3, 24, 27. Look at that. So it's going to be 4 times. And our answer is 272 giving us a zero and I'll do the last one just because I still have a little bit of time so 167.67 divided by 8.1 right right as a fraction we got to multiply this by some power of 10 to give us 81 so in order to give us to change 81, 8.1 to 81, we're going to multiply it by 10, right? And that's going to move the decimal one over. So it's 10 and 10 on top. And on the top, this decimal moves from here to between 6 and 7. So it's 167.6.7. And that's our new number. Let's get ready to divide. 81. That's not going to 1, that's not going to 16, because it's going to 167 two times, which is 162. 5, 6, can 81 go into 56? No, so I put a 0 there on top. I'm going to put this decimal on top, bring the 7 down, I'll get my 6 down. So 81 does not go into 56, so it goes to 56 0 times, bring the 7 down. And I think it's obviously, well, in the only number that multiplied by 81 to give to ends in the 7, it's going to be 7, that sort of makes sense, right? 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 8 is 56. Final answer, 20.7 times. So how many times can 8.1 go inside 167.67? 20.7. Okay, I'll post this up and hopefully that helped.